okay we are here vamos a ver let's see camera is working yes okay well i'm gonna take this off for a second yeah. hello everybody hola is anybody home is anybody here menos por ti <laughs> Hola! Nice. Hola, lady! Hola! How are you? Hi, Leslie from Louisiana! We love Leslie! <laughs> You're always there! What time is it right now in Louisiana? Hi, Linda! Louisiana. Okay, so if it's. Uh, okay, now it's 5. I think 4, 3, 2, 1, 12, 11. Like two o'clock at night? I don't know what time it is. Hey, lady. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> Good morning from California. California. Pero qué hora son esa? What time is no it sé. there? Like way it's early in the way. morning. Yay! Hi, Janet. It's 10 a.m. in the morning. Oh, okay. So it's a decent time. Okay. Diez de la okay. mañana es una hora muy decente. Yes, 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 yes. Hi, Melissa from Minneapolis. From Colorado, Janet. Hi from Chicago. Hi Patricia. I would like to be in anywhere. There. <laughs> Me too. I would love to be anywhere there. Yes. Hi Jorge. Yeah. Me too. I need to travel. I need to get on back on a plane and fly. Do you remember what's flying? No. Like, oh. no. I really need to fly away. Come fly we only need with to me. drive the car no. without no borders. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Uh, I think I see okay, we have three minutes to go. We're gonna to try to be always on time. Okay. We're gonna be good. I will check. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's a beautiful day yeah. here in Bastan Valley. Look at the sun. Not the sun. Not, the Not sun. even one cloud. <laughs> Darn. Hey. Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos tardes. Well, it's afternoon. People laughing at us because we were speaking in English. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. Yeah, thank God they don't know us here. Sit. Sit, sit, sit. Okay. Yeah, there's never any cars driving through here except now that we're live. <laughs> this is crazy. They're all gonna have coffee? Hopefully not. Hi Ivy. Hi. Ivy. 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 Repaski. That's difficult to say. Yeah. Ivy? It's easier to say Urarekinegiña. Of course. <laughs> These bus ports. <laughs> okay. Car. Bike. Very loud bike. Two minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, just say the una. <laughs> Yay! Look at that beautiful river. Bastan River. Bastan River, yeah. Hola, everybody. <laughs> How is the world? It's incredible, mm. but people is from everywhere. Susana Saldías. Hi, Susana. Esto suena de que es de por aquí, ¿eh? Esta es de por aquí. <laughs> yeah. That's a... So this is a village from very, very close to here. Yeah. So that is the last name. So probably it's from around here. I guess. So. Hi, Loris. I'm Cuca. Saragüeta. Urtasun. Also from okay. around here. Yes. Yeah. From here. Also from here. Also. Okay. So it's five o'clock. It's almost five o'clock. Let's wait ten seconds. Let's try to be always on time. On time or in time? On time, in time. What is the difference? That's why it's me on time, in time, on time. I would say on time. Is it on time or in time? I say on time. On time. You say? I don't know. I'm asking you. I don't know. I really don't know. I would say on time. Hi, Elizabeth. Okay. Yes. It's five o'clock. Now we can start. On time or in time? In time. <laughs> Sharp. 
<laughs> okay, so hi everybody. Hi, I'm Francisco. I'm Elo. And it's on time. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so it's five o'clock and we are today here in the village of Elizondo. E-L-I-C-O-N-D-O. Elizondo. It's Batam Valley. It's in the Batam Valley. It's the capital of the Batam Valley. And we're going to visit this beautiful, beautiful little village full of history and traditions. But take a look at how beautiful our surroundings are. Look at the... Well, we have an amazing, amazing, beautiful day. It's a glorious day. Let's go to see the river, the Batam River. Okay. Oh. Beautiful river. So, about the river. Uh, yeah. Would you hold please the camera? Because I'm going to put my mask yes. on. Thank you very much. Okay. Here. There we go. Okay. So, the river, Batam River, it is a. Uh, what, what does it Matan, mean? First Matan of all? means, uh, like to say, all together. All together. All together, yes. Okay, that's the, the meaning of the valley that we and are. The name of the valley and the name of the river. But that river has two names. Here is Batan, and a little bit further it is Vidasoa, and it's the river who makes the border between Spain and France. Okay, so uh, right now we are from Pamplona all the way to the north. Right behind us we have uh, the Pyrenees. Yeah. Okay, uh, in less than 20 minutes driving we are we would be in France. Okay, uh, the border. Here it's called Ochondo, but if you go to the Cantabric Sea, this river that we have seen, it is the one that divides Spain with, uh, yes. with France. Okay, the thing is that this part, uh, of this village especially, the thing is that uh, we have the border and the mountains. We're all here, everybody, all the economy is about shepherding. Okay, or it was about shepherding, and the thing is that all the shepherds they knew very well. Uh, about the mountains and they knew the mountains perfectly so there was a second very important job in yes. here <laughs> it wasn't really a job we can talk we can say that it was a job it was a job let's say it was a job uh, the job that we're talking about hi Kathy the job we're talking is that everybody in this village they are smugglers <laughs> Nobody says they are, but it's incredible. They have always trafficked with tobacco, oil, uh, coffee. coffee during the <laughs> war. Uh, the pills, 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 yes, uh, aspirins. Yes. Because in France, the aspirins they were, they were much, much the better. Best aspirins are from France. <laughs> so they would smuggle with yes. everything. And they made a lot of money. Okay, so <laughs> that was the second biggest job around here. So, one of the things important on this village it is the coat of arms okay this coat of arms all the houses in the valley not in the village in the whole valley they have this coat of arms this was a gift by one of the kings of navarre yes okay because they have always worked for the crown of navarre yes they uh, went to a, one of the most important battles in spain it was the battle where we start uh, Flowing out, yes. Sp kick out. Kick out, okay. Muslims from Spain. Okay, so if it's yes. the Muslims, we invited out. Yes. <laughs> we pulled the Muslims out. It was the most important battle because of that. The king gave to the people from Elizondo and the Batam Valley this coat of arms. So all the people that, who are born in this valley they all have, let's say, like a novelty title, okay? Uh, which today would be like, okay, big deal. But back then in time, it was very important because if you have a novelty title, means that yeah. you were allowed to have land. Yes. You had property, which was in the Middle Ages, something very, very, and very special. Means, uh, the most important things means that they were freedom of doing anything without asking to the Lord. So, 
you didn't need to have permission of the Lord or the lady to do whatever you wanted to do. Okay, so that was a, the, having a coat of arms back then, it was super, when I say back then, it was a super important thing. Here, uh, one of the most important, another important uh, job, it was the iron work, okay? We have a lot of iron around here and check this, if my zoom decides to work, I guess my fingers are frozen. This is kind of cold today. Look at that beautiful, beautiful balcony. I mean, it's incredible how beautiful the iron work in this village is. Okay? And remember, this is really expensive. You need to have a lot of money for buying or for having a balcony like that one. And look how many balconies <laughs> they, they have, have in this house. Yes. So here the houses are huge. Okay, let's cover our mouths. Yes. That's but they have a lot of money. Hi, Kristen from Toronto. The work, yes, it's super beautiful. Another thing that I love of this little village is that they have this incredible French style balcony. You have to think that we're in a village that has less this than 3,000 people. In Navarra, in the north of Navarra. And here in the north of Navarre, because of the weather, it's very cold and it's very rainy. We have these beautiful balconies, which is very French style, but you have to understand that we are as we said, 20 minutes away from France. So we are super, super French influenced, okay? Okay. Uh, another peculiarity of this valley is that all the houses are constructed in this red stone. Uh, stones, I guess, yeah. So uh, everything has this red stone, which is super, super hard. Well, it's red because it has a lot of iron into it and it's very hard to work on it but uh, once you construct it's forever okay this is a very traditional way of constructing okay let me move around because there's a car coming it's not even a car it's like <laughs> look at that little thing it was making all of that noise <laughs> okay so we'll go to see later the church of the village because that's what we call the new church. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. All the kids here playing, soccer. Yay! This is the main square in the village. This is the main square, yep. Yes. And this beautiful building that we have here is where the old church used to, yes. to be. Yes, yes. And Elizondo, it is a word in Basque. You know what that means? What does it mean? That means uh, near the church. Eliz uh, means church, and uh, it was because the church was here where we have now this building. But in the 1914, uh, something like that, the river destroyed almost all the village, including the church. So Elizondo means by the church. Yes, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and there's a beautiful building here, which is this palace from the 18th century. Uh, this is today the city hall. City hall yes. And one of the things I like, okay, <laughs> a little political issue here. Uh, well, we'll have to talk about this. Yes. Uh, this part uh, is where we do have Basque culture. Everything is in Basque. First in Basque, Everyone, then, yes. uh, and then in Spanish. Everyone talks in Basque. Everyone speaks yes. in Basque. And so, they only learn Spanish at a school. At a school. So yes. everybody and everywhere, I mean, if you come, if you speak Spanish, everybody will talk to you in Spanish. But everybody at home, they speak Basque. So here, there's a big Basque feeling. And one of the things I think it's funny in this uh, city hall are and the flags. I yes. complicate, especially when we're guiding. Yes. The two of us were local guides here. Well, we got people from Spain that are like a little bit offended or very offended because of this. Look at the flags. So, the red flag, the one on your left, it's Navarre, the estate. The one on the right, it's the village. The village or the Elizondo, valley. Yes. Or the valley, it's beautiful. And the one that is all tightened up inside in of the, the pole in the middle that you can yes. barely see, this is the Spanish flag. So that is <laughs> a very... It has to be there by law, but it's a way to hide it, okay? Which I think is kind of 
let's say funny, yes. but it's a very political issue and it's super controversial, the issue with the... Uh, when we come with the Spanish... Yes, that when we come with people from Spain, we yes. have to be super careful with these separatist yes. movements and all of this because it's a very complicated uh, situation, let's yes. put it that way. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, about the valley? Yes, we have been talking about shepherds and we need to say that these shepherds went to America. Because of that, we have so many uh, big buildings in that part of the, of the valley. Because they went to America and some of them came back uh, really wealthy. And so many times we have talked about this huge economical crisis that we had on the 18th century. Okay? On the 1700s, here there was a huge, huge, huge uh, economical crisis. crisis. And all of these very good shepherds, they went to America. Okay? Here... Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing is that when we say America, uh, for us Europeans, America starts in Alaska and it goes all the way to Argentina, yes. not just yes. the United States of America. Yes. Okay? They were wherever there were sheep or cows. Okay, so they went to Ohio. They were in Boise. There's a huge uh, bus settlement, and a lot of people are from here. There's people in Bakersfield, in Reno. There's people in Mexico. There's uh, yes. a, a lot, lot of people. people. They went to Argentina too. Yep. In Argentina, there's a lot of people. Okay. Yes. In fact, my grandmother, she was born in Argentina. Did you know that? No. No. I didn't she was know from that. Yes. Uh, Bariloche. No. In Argentina. I didn't know that. People from not this valley, another valley, they were shepherds and they went all the way to Argentina and my grandmother, she was born there. Yes. I didn't know that. Yep. Okay. So the thing is that many of them, uh, Elko Nevada, I guess, NV yes. Nevada. Probably. Probably, yeah. In Nevada there were still a lot of bus people, so probably. So they yes. They still having many uh, bus houses where they uh, get all together and they try to learn Basque and they try to, to remember the traditions. Uh, Let's move, because yes. this site is much more beautiful this yes, way than the other, <laughs> this is a horrible gate. And they gate. try to, to, to have the tradition, to, to keep the tradition, and every year, we have, not now because of the COVID, but we have uh, people coming to Navarra, and they uh, show us how they are uh, improving the Basque language, and they sing in Basque, and it is quite interesting. We have some meetings in the valley in the north from the people who are living there and their grandsons, grandsons grandkids. Yes, grandkids came here and tried to talk in Basque and this is really beautiful. To me, the first time I felt this Basque connection was when I was in high school. I went to a Bakersfield in California and I had no idea there was a Basque, big Basque settlement there. And I went to the Basque Eche, the Basque house, and we're talking before internet. I'm that old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the thing is that uh, all of these old guys and old ladies, super nice people from all of these valleys, they would sit by me and tell us about Spain, tell us about this village. Have you ever been to that village? It was very, something very beautiful that I, I really keep in my heart because the connection of those people, it was incredible. Yeah, and they are still, they are still doing it because uh, two years ago, we have a kind of big meeting in the valley where I came from uh, of um, shepherds that they have been living there wow. and a young group of, uh, of students from the high school, they try to sing in Basque. It was really funny. <laughs> they, they try and they do it yes. really, really they're, well. Yes. They're very good. It's super yes. fun. So anyway, a lot of them made a lot of money. And well, by the way, Cynthia, you have a skid in Bariloche. I've never been to Argentina. Can you believe it? My grandmother was born there. I've never been there. So. My next trip, oh no, <laughs> I need to recover. <laughs> yes, I have to make. Anyway, so all of these uh, shepherds, the ones that made it big, uh, their dream was to come back to their valleys. And if they couldn't come, they would construct, or if they came in back, they would construct these incredible, incredible palaces, like the one that we have right behind us. Okay? Yeah, and really important, they help the village because. Uh, when in the village they have problems, they construct schools, uh, yeah. frontones. It's a really important thing in here in the, in the Basque country. So they were like, let's say, the benefactors of the villages, okay? 
they they brought a lot of you know it was the pride to you know i have made it big in america and now i'm going to construct the new church or the new schools or whatever right? so it was one of those beautiful beautiful things hi my there I've heard the Basque came over for the silver mines as well as for gold of brush. Is that true? Okay. Is that true? Yes, Linda. The thing is that in the Basque country we have, I would say, four different jobs. You can be a shipper, you can be a fisherman, you can be a miner, and if you're not all of these three, you have to become a tour guide. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, seriously. There are three important jobs in the history of the Basque shepherding, mining, and fishing. So yes, they went also for the gold rush. You are right. I didn't know that part. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know that part. Another video that makes me need to come there <laughs> myself. Yes, you did. Leslie, yes, come over here. Hi, Houdin. Daria. Yeah. My Good. brother. Your brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ooh, there's okay. another car coming. They, they Be were... careful. What they did was to hunt um, whales. Oh yes, whale hunters. <laughs> whale hunters, yeah. Whale hunters. More they were fishers. Well, yeah. fishermen, well hunting, it's pretty much the same. So one of the things that is kind of shocking is the sizes of the houses. All the houses, look at them how incredibly big they are. Okay. In these houses, uh, there will be a whole family living together. Okay, we're talking. 15, 20 people living in the same house. Okay, so the house is, is uh, in this culture, uh, the eche, it's how we call house, is one of the most important things that we, of, we always have. Okay, so having your home well taken care, it's a, it's a sign of respect of your heritage, of you, who you are and everything. Okay? One of the things that I love about this village, okay, you see this huge house that we have here. We cannot go farther back to get a little better perspective, sorry. And you have the other house right by it. But as I said, they're right by it. They're side by side, but they do not touch. Look at the distance between the two houses. I mean, it's like minimum, 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 minimum. Okay? Do you know how it is named here? How? It's a carte. It's a carte. It's a That's the hole in between the two houses. Yes. They don't share the houses, which doesn't make sense because, you know, my heat, the heat in my house will warm your house as well, so which is, well. This is really important, not only to know that part is mine, the other part is yours. The problem is that the tejados, the, the ceiling, are made by wood. And many times when we have uh, battles Ooh, and walls. Uh, we were waiting for her and she was waiting for us. She just parked here. So sorry. Uh, when she, Ella, sorry, we almost got <laughs> run over by a bike. <laughs> so what Ella say is that the reason. That, yes, if we have a fire in one house, it is possible if they are really close one to the other one, it is possible to have the fire from one house to the next one and we will have a really big fire in all the village. Because of that it is um, and they have yeah, an space. A space so the yes. houses don't touch and the fire yes. cannot jump from house it's to house easy to house. To stop a fire in one house that to have in all the village. Yep. We have two reasons for that. Hi Tara, hi Mert. Okay. <laughs> so let's go see to me one of the most beautiful places yes. i think this is i think this is a picture of elizondo this, this is, is the, the place that we need to visit <laughs> when we can yes visit. no matter when you come everybody from what everywhere around k, k off what is k off i don't know what's k off Patty. hi friend hi tara look at this that's so gorgeous How old is the town? Hmm. We know that there's prehistoric uh, settlements, okay, around yeah. here. Yes, I love the sound of the water too. So we know there's prehistorical uh, settlements uh, from the copper, yes. the Laida de Bronze, copper time. And 
the houses, some of them are from the 16, 1500s. But we knew that the, the first church that we have here, because all the village in that part start with a church, and the church was from the 12th century. And we know that in the 13th century, we have the people from here helping the kids. So probably 9th, 10th century. 9th, 800s, 900s, so pretty old, I guess. OK, so let me turn around. Because yeah, because it's Kaisho, really beautiful. Okay, Kaisho. autocorrect. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all hate autocorrect? <laughs> okay, so let me turn the camera around because this site is gorgeous. Ka uh, can you guys listen to us okay with all of the sound of the water? Yeah. Give us a thumb up yes. if you can listen to us. Please, because <laughs> I would love to talk here about mythology. Yeah, yeah. Because place. I think... Uh, mythology is one of the big important things in the Basque culture. Okay, in the Basque culture, as this is an ancestral uh, tradition, everything related with nature uh, was very, very important. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Cynthia. Hi, Vero. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Thank you. <laughs> so the thing is that all the thing with the mother nature was protecting here, and she sent all of these beautiful creatures to take care of mother nature. In the rivers, she put the lamias, yes. okay, who were pretty much like the mermaids, okay? They were protectors of the waters and they would always be protecting the water. But the most important mythological creature that we have at here. Least, yes, at least the stronger, at least the stronger, it is Basahound. The Basahound. The Basahound. I don't know how to translate that into English. Uh, okay, uh, the Basahound is they, we call it the invisible guardian, okay? Yeah. Who is, let's say, the guardian of the forest, like the Bigfoot or the Yeti, okay? Maybe the Bigfoot and the Yeti are like the bad cousins, okay? Yeah. This one is but, a super good guy, okay? He takes care of nature, he takes care of everything. And he takes care of you if you are in trouble in the mountain, unless you are trying to damage animals or, or the forest, yeah, okay? So, uh, the Basa Hound is that invisible guardian. Well, using that... Okay, sorry. <laughs> using that mythological uh, creature, a few years, uh, the nature guardian, yeah. Okay. Uh, using that mythological creature, there was a writer called Dolores Redondo. Yeah. And she wrote a trilogy, three yeah. books. Have you seen the films? Yes. yes. You so, can see it on Netflix. So the thing is, the books, the first one is called The Invisible Guardian. Uh, I have posted in the text that it's going to come out later. If you guys want to read that book, it's translated to English. I have put the Amazon link. Okay. And they are really interesting because, okay, you know, it's a novel, but they talk about the mythological creatures and they talk about the traditions. That they still have in here in this. No. I mean, it's, it's a thriller, okay? It's not about mythological creatures, but the mythology is around everything, okay? So it's a beautiful book. And as Ella was saying, yes. there's some three movies out of it that you can watch on Netflix, okay? The Invisible Guardian. And the writer, she used to stay in that little hotel right there, okay? Yes. Right by this house that today, unfortunately, they have put, because it's been super cold, and they have put plastics everywhere in the houses but it's super beautiful with all the green and everything okay so that's one of the beautiful things about this place yes okay yes. so we go that way by the way by the way you don't have to say that but this is named the chocoto and uh, they use it for I'm out. Four? Come here. <laughs> I'm out. Have you seen? All right. Come on the seat. So, okay. this is called Chocoto. Chocoto. And this is uh, because we have the river uh, getting outside in the in the village many times. And uh, they use it uh, for producing corn. Corn wheat. No, corn flour. Flour. Okay. Corn flour. Yes. But they only have used for 20 years. And uh, the people from uh, the city hall, they want to destroy that part of the river, but people from Elizondo, they have said no. 
we don't use it. We have used it only for 20 years, but we want to have the chocotto in the middle chocotto of the Chocotto is that press or that yes, jump for the wine, press. okay? Si. So, very good, pero, yes, good in Spanish. So, uh, what else? Uh, if you get to read the book, also yeah, there's yeah. something uh, that around here is very important, which is, okay, this, uh, this valley has always been very Christian, very Catholic, okay? Religion has been always very strong, very important. The thing is that if we play this uh, with this Basque tradition of having uh, nature and everything, there's a very strong sensibility regarding uh, nature and all of that. And the thing is that uh, this uh, love for nature brings also understanding nature, taking care of people with nature, and healing with nature. And for a lot of people in Middle Ages, unfortunately, if a woman <laughs> does something like this, she is a witch. So here, there, are, there has always been a lot of witches, but in the Basque tradition, a witch, we don't, the word is called sorguine. And sorguine means the person who brings life. Okay, so for us, a witch or a warlock is not a bad thing, okay? Yeah, it's totally the other way. Uh, a witch is somebody who's going to help you, okay? Uh, the problem was that the, this woman, they have the power of knowledge. They know a lot of things. They know how to take care of a person who is, uh, uh, who is ill, and they know how to um, prepare uh, natural um, remedies yes and... natural remedies and because of that it was a moment in the 16th century that the church decided that it was an old idea to have some people who was uh, a little bit um, more free mm. than in the rest of, of the of the parts of Spain because that woman they have this knowledge so this is the problem on the 16th century one of the bad things at first this is a huge matriarchy, okay? The power of women is super strong. Then you have women who have a lot of so knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still, this is still yes. a big uh, matriarchal <laughs> society. Uh, here, Por lo menos en mi casa. in your house and in my house, in everybody's house. <laughs> so on the 16th century, having a matriarchal community, a community who worships nature, uh, where you heal with nature, where women have a lot of knowledge, was not good. So the witchcraft, it was super, super big here. Unfortunately, uh, there was a lot of trials and a lot of things. Today, I think we all have an aunt or an uncle who is a witch, okay, or a warlock. <laughs> Personally, we, in my family, we had uh, a very important witch, okay? Uh, her name was Marichu, uh, Marichu Erlan, Marichu de Guler. She was super well known in the witch world, around yeah. the world. And if you want to learn more about it, uh, please go to, I have written an article uh, about a very strange experience that happened to me with her when I was a kid. Uh, go to travelingsteps.es and there in our blog, in our journal, you will find a little bit of that information. Uy, perdone. <laughs> Sorry, we have this lady walking by. So if you want to learn a little bit about our witches, go to travelingsteps.es and you can find it there. So here we are finally in the church of Elizondo. Are there special cuisines or drinks that Navarra area is known for? Yes, Joyce. Here we have one drink that is very important. It's called Pacharan, which is made of uh, pastis, like the French pastis that probably you know, and some berries. It's super sweet. Uh, has a lot of alcohol content in it. Yeah, and in this valley there is another one which is named Mandragora and it is made with uh, hierbas. With uh, herbs? Yes, uh, a little bit strong. A that little bit really super stronger. strong. And it is supposed is the one that witches drink when they enjoy a party. <laughs> Any magic spells you can teach us today, Fran? Uh, no, I cannot. <laughs> but I can read your palm if you want. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so we are in the church 
So one of the things that is, I think is funny, or I love of these valleys, it's that uh, we mix pagan things, like the witches and warlocks and everything, and a huge church, okay? So one thing doesn't have to go against each other. In, this in these valleys, people understand that nature, yeah. look at the courtyard of the church. I mean, it's all about nature. Can, doesn't go against God, and, and they have, can live together. And we have the church, or an image <laughs> of, the, of the Holy Mary, and we have a pagan, pagan symbolism pagan in the same place at home. Should we start making a list? <laughs> Tara, yes, you. So one of the things that I like about this church, this is the church that was constructed after the, uh, the river flooded half of the village and erased the old church, yeah. is yeah. that the, the construction of this church was paid by one of these immigrants who went to America. Uh, he went to Mexico. Fran, I just found your witch story. <laughs> ah, thank you for sharing it, Patricia. You are a gem. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, the guy who went to Mexico, back to him. Uh, he went to Mexico and he joined a couple of other people from Spain. And uh, one from Valencia and the other one I think was from Cantabria. Well, from different regions of Spain. And they made one beer. And they made it big. And when I mean big, I mean really big. In fact, they ended up selling their company to Budweiser. I'm talking about Corona. Okay, you know the, the little beer, no the Mexican virus, beer? No, no coronavirus? No, 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 Corona beer. Okay. And the, one of the Corona. owners from Corona. Uh, well, here in Spain, by the way, it's not called Corona. It's called it's Coronita. Coronita. Because uh, the Spanish royal family has the license of the word Corona. So they cannot use it. And in Spain, you will not find Corona beer. You will find Coronita beer. And uh, if you ever know, have you, I don't know if you have in mind the logo of Corona beer, but guess what? The guy who paid for it put the logo on the front of the church of his village. You see that white Corona beer? <laughs> that if <laughs> nobody lets you know, you say, oh, it's the crown of God, whatever. Uh -uh -uh. <laughs> That's the crown of a beer. So, uh, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! So the owner of Corona beer is from here. Yeah. Which is incredible. I think it's wonderful. Uh, another thing that I like about this is that here, this strange piece of art that unfortunately it's all torn apart, especially this year. They didn't clean it, they didn't do anything to it. Uh, it is a piece of art by a very, yes, way, <laughs> uh, a very important Basque artist. Okay, uh, His name is Jorge Oteiza. Okay. And uh, this was a gift uh, by one of the members of the family, of the Teith family, to the village of Elizondo. Okay? Uh, it's a very modern sculpture, as you can see. What we know is that Jorge Oteiza, he, he, um, he had agoraphobia, he was afraid of empty spaces, so he always tried to look for the inside of the cube. So this is what the inside of the thing. So this is his representation of it. And I leave it there because I cannot tell you anything else about this piece of art that is kind of, what? Okay, so yes, Mexicans love Corona beer. Yes. Uh, me too. <laughs> you too, me too. I'm not Mexican, too, I love it. I'm Mexican. Okay. So uh, now we're going to go, okay. Look at that beautiful house. Oh God, and the light perfect light. Tink. So one thing that we need to talk a little bit more serious. Uh, in 1492, the Catholic kings, they were married, okay, they discovered America, and Spain became a big country except two parts. In the south, we had Granada, and here in the north, the Kingdom of Navarre. And in 1492, uh, the Catholic kings became very powerful, they discovered America, and with all the money, they did one thing that was not, let's say, politically correct. They moved, removed the Muslims and the Jews out, out of, Spain. of Spain. The Muslims, most of them, or they made them convert, okay? Uh, the Muslims, they went south to Morocco and many of the Jewish communities uh, in Spain, well, in Spain and Portugal, okay? Because remember, uh, the Jewish and the Muslims, they were expelled from Spain and Portugal. 
a lot of them they went into what today is France okay the thing is that here in Navarre we were not uh, Spanish yet and we didn't mind if they would stay so a lot of them they stayed in here in Navarre and especially here in the north and when America was discovered uh, there were many things coming uh, to Spain okay for the first time we saw what potatoes are and tomatoes and corn things that we had never tasted and uh, also the cacao beans came over here to Spain and the Jewish community in Spain they were the ones who took care of the cacao beans and good the Jewish are very good traders they said nobody's buying this let's add some sugar to it and that's how we discover the chocolate the thing is that that chocolate production came all the way to here and from here to France okay to the right on the other side yes, so to the French Basque country yeah, to the best French Basque country you have a lot of uh, chocolate factories right on the, the other world, side yes. in, uh, in Bayonne, in Espelet, Biarritz, all of these little Basque, uh, French Basque, they have chocolate factories. Yes. And here in this village, we also have, a, it's not a chocolate factory. No. But. No. And it's different because this way of preparing chocolate uh, it is um, they brought from America, from Mexico. It is the way they prepare there the chocolate. And we only have these two places in Navarra and they still prepare in that way. We say it. You, you say it. I am not going to say it. Urrare quine guiña. Say it slower. Urrare quine guiña. Urrare quine guiña. That means that the chocolate it is made with hazelnut. Hazel. Hazelnut. Hazelnut. Okay. okay. And uh, we are going to find between the chocolate, the hazelnut, uh, enteras. Complete, not Complete, untouched. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. So we're going to go, to, we ask permission. They said, okay, if it's not too crowded, you may come in and tape. We'll see if they don't kick us out. <laughs> so, one again, another thing, if you guys get to read or watch the movies, uh, The Invisible Guardian, uh, I told you it's a thriller. And the killer, the sign of the killer, yes. is that he, well, he kills these women, uh, he puts a pastry. Don't make a spoiler. I'm not going to make a spoiler. No. Uh, they make a, a cookie, uh, very typical from here, from this place. Okay? Yes. So His name? And it's called Chanchigori. Okay, so the place we're going to visit is called Malcorra. It's a little, it's just a we little cafe. Okay, okay. It is okay easy yes. To say. I think we can come in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so this place to me is heaven because look at all the cookies. Everything is like yummy, 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 mega yummy. But the tradition, yeah, but it's not after Christmas. Okay, so this is the chocolate. Okay, and here you have urakin eginya. Yeah, Invisible Guardian on Netflix, that's it. Yes. So and we have the three films. Okay, and here. Oh, Dios, está el... Chicken. <laughs> Take that out. So you that have. That one is with milk? You have on the back, that one. The dark one. It's dark, which is the traditional one. Yes. With hazelnuts. And as you can see, the hazelnuts are all complete. Yes. Here they have with a little bit of milk, a little bit softer. Baby, for baby people. No, nah, the good one <laughs> is the real one. Yes, the dark one is the. Does it smell good, Joyce? You cannot imagine how good it smells. Okay, okay, and then now they have also with almonds. Okay, I love this one with almonds because I'm allergic to hazelnuts. Really yes, the traditional one. That's right. And look at all of that chocolate in there. I mean, look at that. Hazelnuts are your weakness, <laughs> Leslie. <laughs> Here, chocolate, chocolate is my chocolate <laughs> and hazelnuts, or in my case, almond. But also, here, one of the specialties are, as we are so close to France, they make the best pastries in the world. Okay, we came a little bit before, and we asked them, please say for us those two, 
those two thingies there, they're called dolmen, okay? So they're super thick, uh, like croissant pastry. Yes, like then the little legs are dipped in chocolate, chocolate. and inside it has a, a little bit of hazel butter. I mean, oy, para, para, para. so they're beyond good, but also the pan chocolate or the chocolatine, they're super good. And <laughs> look at this. Thank you so much. Estos son los nuestros, ¿no? <laughs> Gracias. No. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're killing me. I know, she's killing me too. Look at this. It's like, oh, I mean, they're so good. And they're all so crispy and so... Mm, I can't wait to finish this tour to come to eat these babies. But look at the croissants. I mean, really, everything from here is super, super good. Right? It is incredibly delicious. Not fair. I know, Mary, life's not fair. <laughs> so, volvemos en un minuto. Vale? We'll be back. Take that... Be careful with that. No los vendas, eh? Don't sell them. <laughs> Esos son nuestros. Tiene nuestro nombre. Where's yours, Jorge? Mm, you'll have to come. I love this, this little place. So, if you read the books, uh, when they talk about the pastries, they talk about the pastries from here. Okay? Vamos a Paulenea. Ya acabamos ahí. So, I love... Yeah. I don't remember the three books, but if you look for them in Netflix, uh, the three books you will find them. We know that the first one is Invisible Guardian, or well, three films, sorry. The books are much, much better than the movies. Okay? The books are, especially the first and the third books, are thrilling. They're fantastic. The best one is the third. The third? The third. I, to me, I think it's the first one. I, uh, the first one to me, it's super. <laughs> Gives me goosebumps. Anyway, being in that shop with you, yeah, Jorge, you were here. My eight year old Sage is loving this part. <laughs> Chocolate! You have to come, Tara, with your kids. Okay, so one of the things that is incredible is as we were talking, all of these huge houses that the people who had to go, that diaspora, that Basque diaspora, uh, all the people had to go and they made these beautiful, beautiful houses. This is called Paula Arena, okay? It's a gorgeous house. And as a difference with normal Basque houses is that here they have gardens, okay? Because a normal Basque house has no gardens at all. It's all farming and that's pretty much all it is, okay? So it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful house. That normally during the year, they're closed. They're closed and the reason is because all of these people, they live, well, they live in America, they live uh, wherever they are. And many of them now, now they are used by the city halls. It is like uh, libraries or uh, oh. What's the use to all of these offices, huge houses? Yes, yes, this kind of services because it is really expensive to keep one of these so, houses. Yeah. So. I, I want one of these. You want one of these? Yes. You know how much there is to clean in yes. here? It's like, no, I'm going, I don't want a big house like that. So anyway, are we almost done? Yes, we are. Me voy a por el dormir. Let's go for the chocolate <laughs> and let's go for a cup of coffee. So my friends, uh, thank you everybody. Uh, hopefully you have enjoyed our tour today. Uh, hopefully you Thank have you learned so a little much. bit. Thanks for watching. Remember that all of these tours are tip supported. So if you want to leave a tip, thank you very much. Tips are super welcome, super appreciated. And we'll see you next week. Yes. Okay. Scary Casco. Thank you very much. See you later. See you later. Yes. Eta, see you later. No. Um, how do you say Geruarte. it? Geruarte. Geruarte. There we go. That's Geruarte. how you say it. So thank you. Eloy. Geruarte. That's the one I know. Ikusiarte. That's too Hasta que nos veamos. I'll see sí, sí, whenever sí. we see you. So, <sighs> thank you everybody. Uh, it's been great. Uh, we will see you soon. Uh, especially to Tara. Uh, you know, all of these days, the Facebook is telling us, uh, you, last year you were in <laughs> Seattle. Two years ago you were in Seattle. I miss you guys so much. I wish I was in the United States right now. I'm like, oh my God. 
I. So sorry, but you need to stay here in Navarra. I know. I love being here, and I love being with all of you. But I would here. love to go back to Seattle. So everybody, have a great week tomorrow. Congratulations! You're gonna have a new president. Uh, please be careful. And thank you very, very, very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a great day, everybody.